Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask all present to please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given. And at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the usher's instructions for exiting from the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our opening hymn is number 447 in the Catholic Book of Worship, A Living Faith. Please stand. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Today is a very special feast day in our church, the feast of St. John Vianney. St. John Vianney was a famous French priest, a very simple soul, who was a curé of ours in France. He st found that studying to be very difficult, and, um, but he was ordained in 1815 as a priest. And he went to this little village in Ars Dendon in France where the people were not very interested in religion or God at all. But he spent the rest of his life serving that little village. He was a renowned confessor. Hundreds of people would come every day. He would spend 12 to 16 hours in confession. Anyway, that would exhaust me after two hours. But anyway, as you know, but 12 to 16 hours a day. And for 30 years, he served that little village, you know. People were healed and converted. And people were, uh, you know, gave, were given wisdom and advice. They would come from miles around. And they figured he was a saint many years before he died. So when he died at the age of 73 in 1859, he was canonized in 1925 and is the patron saint of parish priests. So pray for all of our parish priests in our diocese and throughout the world today. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts, 
to forgive us our sins. mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who made the priest Saint Jean Vianney wonderful in his pastoral zeal, grant we pray that through his intercession and example, we may in charity win brothers and sisters for Christ and attain with them eternal glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. One day... The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert. Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each of their ancestral tribes you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. At the end of forty days they returned from spying out the land, and they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the Israelites in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruits of the land. And they told him, We came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Yet the people who live in the land are strong, and the towns are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the land of the Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live by the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. But then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. So they brought to the Israelites an unfavorable report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are of great size. There we saw the Nephilim, the Anakites come from Nephilim, and to ourselves we seemed like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. Then all the congregation raised a loud cry, and the people wept that night. 
and all the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron. And the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, How long shall this wicked congregation complain against me? I have heard the complaints of the Israelites, which they complain against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. Your dead bodies shall fall in this very wilderness, and of all your number included in the census, from twenty years old and upward, who have complained against me. According to the number of days in which you spied out the land, forty days, for every day a year you shall bear your iniquity for forty years, and you shall know my displeasure. I, the Lord, have spoken. Surely I will do thus to all this wicked congregation gathered together against me. In the wilderness they shall come to a full end, and there they shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 105, the Lord will make a new covenant with his people.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the district of Tyre and Sidon, and a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was listening to the reading this morning, I hadn't planned on talking about the first reading, but I remember my mother every now and then would say to one of her nine children, which I was one, that you would try the patience of God. And I think the Israelites this morning kind of, uh, in that particular reading, try, trying the patience of God, they were never happy or never satisfied with very much for very long. I guess if you're 40 years in the, in the desert trying to survive, uh, you know, you do lose patience even yourself. And as we go through difficult times, you know, we blame God and, uh, and we, we sort of uh, try the patience of God, I'm sure. This morning in the gospel, there is no stronger bond, you know, between, than between a mother and a child. In the today's reading, a pagan or Gentile woman approaches Jesus on behalf of her seriously ill child. And it is striking that she says to Jesus, take pity on me and help me rather than take pity on my child and help my child. She identifies fully with her child's condition. The suffering of our child is her own suffering, so much like parents. If your children are sick or your children are really in trouble, you feel that yourself. The suffering of her child is her own suffering. Jesus seems at first detached from the pleading mother. Her initial response is one of silence. He explains to his disciples that for now his primary mission is to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, his own people, who are not very good, rather than to the lost, already equally lost house of the um, Gentiles or pagans. The woman declares she would be happy with whatever Jesus could do for her. You know, I know he's, you know, he's, he's, for, he's certainly only for the Jewish people, uh, but she'll, whatever scraps from the table, whatever scraps from him, that uh, whatever comes from Jesus, no matter how small, it'll help her daughter. That's kind of the, the meaning of that little conversation uh, between them. Jesus recognized what he calls her great faith. In the gospel, Jesus often addresses his own disciples as people of little faith. But here is a woman of great faith who is not even a Jew. This encounter really allows Jesus to begin his ministry not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles or pagans. Jesus cannot but respond to such great faith. The one, this woman inspires us all to keep persistent in prayer, to keep knocking at the Lord's door, to keep seeking, to keep asking. The woman is a wonderful example for us of persistent faith. She kept on believing, even in the face of the Lord's silence. Sometimes we feel that God is not listening to our prayers. Keep persistent in our prayer. As a result, her faith created a space for the Lord to work in a powerful and unexpected way. She teaches us that the Lord needs our persistent faith if God's purpose for our lives and for humanity is to come to pass. Our prayers of intercession today for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Peter, and all those who lead and guide our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world, especially in the Middle East, Israel, Palestine, and Lebanon, those areas of our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick recommended to our prayers in our families, friends. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died. We pray today for Sister Kristen Brennan, for Jim Cooper, whose funeral is today at 11, and for, the, for Jordan Natterer, whose funeral was yesterday, 
and for all those who mourn the loss, mourn the deaths of loved ones, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers and the quiet of your hearts today, your own intention. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to whom himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash away our iniquity, O Lord, cleanse us of our sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of Blessed St. John Vianney, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Jean Vianney you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation being thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. John the Baptist, St. John Vianney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you for you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow toward the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 6.2 in Celebrate in Song, Dona Nobis Pachem. Prince of Peace and Justice, make 
Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Blessed St. John Vianney, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Christ our Lord. Prayer to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic. O Mary, Mary, you always always shine shine on our path path as a sign sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, sick, who at the cross cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, You, salvation salvation of your people, know what we need, need. and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cain of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we take refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. Our missioning hymn is number 644 in the Catholic Book of Worship, O God, our help in ages past. Yeah.